Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature and be born of the Virgin Mary. Grant that we, having been redeemed and made your children by grace, may be daily renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your, your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Here ends the first lesson. Please read responsibly Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The second reading is taken from Galatians, the fourth chapter. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke, the second chapter, beginning at the twenty second verse. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, 
Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit to, into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant Depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the father and his, his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed and a sword will pierce through your own soul, soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow, until she was 84, she did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the young and young at heart here and at home uh, to attend to our children's message. Our whole group is here today. <gasps> they are all excited because they're going to spend New Year's Eve tonight together. But you know, today isn't just New Year's Eve. What? It is actually the seventh day of Christmas. Yeah, the 12 days of Christmas isn't just a song, it's the season. 
that we celebrate at this time of year. And today is the first Sunday after Christmas. And we remember and continue to give praise and thanks to God for Jesus. And we celebrate his birth. And isn't it wonderful that we heard in our readings today that because of Mary's son, who for those of us here in the space, we can see uh, in the window up front here, Mary uh, holding the baby Jesus, because of Mary's son, we have all become sons and daughters of God the Heavenly Father. One big family. So not just our own families that we have on earth, but brothers and sisters in Christ, which all of you are. And so you'll be celebrating New Year's Eve tonight with your whole Christian family. You all look rather different but you are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And what a wonderful blessing as we head into the new year that we are never alone. Emmanuel, I know that's a big word, means God is with us and God is especially with us in the sisters and brothers in Christ who come along and journey with us and are happy with us and help us during sad and hard times. And so we know there'll be ups and downs in 2024, but we have the presence of God and our family of faith to help us no matter what. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're never too old to. You're never too old to. Fill in the blank as you will. I truly believe that God disagrees with the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. All right? God continues to call us to amazing adventures and journeys in faith, regardless of our age. Because sometimes we think we're all done. We've gotten to a place that we've planned for. We've gotten everything set up just right and everything's good. So we're just going to stay here. And how many of us have been able to, everything just stays the same? I don't know about you, but that's not been my experience. Uh, and it's not been my experience for sisters and brothers uh, here at Zion. And sometimes it's joyful, like a surprise party that was unexpected and offer an opportunity that we didn't think about, but wow, now this has made all the difference. This wasn't my plan, but wow, God had something even better in store. And this was not part of my plan for the message, but this came up in a visit this past week. Um, I, I felt like if I was asking people to consider new things or that, you know, maybe they are like, no, 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 I'm not doing this. And you know, maybe you want to think about it. I felt I needed to give a personal example. And I don't, I think I've shared this here before, but many of you know, um, as um, in, when I was studying for my bachelor's in college after high school, I did declare a religion major in my first year. My father was horrified. My father's like, what, first of all, what on earth are you going to do with that? Is that even something that gives you employment? He said, furthermore, the only thing I can think of that you're going to do is be a pastor. And I said, no, 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 I am not going to be a pastor. I'm going into international relations. I'm taking religion for the cultural aspects. I'm continuing to take foreign language. I'm going to take government classes. I'm going to be in international relations. Pastor, where'd you get that idea? Um, that's not happening. Seriously, it, it, I very much voiced that. 
Um, this is a lesson to you that voice that kind of thing in front of God. Um, at any rate, <laughs> fast forward, the folks I was speaking to obviously knew I was a pastor. And I said, oh my goodness, I can't imagine my life any other way. The joy that the Lord has brought me in his service, and as you all know, it, it is not easy. It is not easy um, dealing with, uh, I know my property people are here today, <laughs> dealing with the structures in which we meet. It, it, it's difficult in, in our journeys of practicing faithfully, and let's not forget the pandemic and the shutdowns and you know year a few years out from that now what what a joy to be here in person and online uh, we've had several people worshiping online in their hospital rooms because we made that shift in covid and and have kept it but it was a clear instance of like no 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 not doing that god i'm in my lane you know i i don't want to hear about these other avenues that we may be going and actually the piece is that god called me and and you're saying well okay that's an extraordinary call being a pastor but god called each and every one of you into his family through washing of the water and the word in baptism and for some people they were of age to confess the lord at that point others of us confessed the lord at confirmation others of us later in life joining another church joining by affirmation of what we believe and what christ has done for us and that we're not only members of a universal christian church around the world joined to the states that have gone before us but we are living breathing brothers and sisters in a local congregation as well. Here at Zion, we're also in a building with sisters and brothers in the Lord of Anglican and Baptist uh, and independent practices of faith. And, uh, it, it, you know, where two or three are gathered, there's a difference of opinion. <laughs> but where two or three are gathered in the Lord, we pray that Christ's peace and his spirit guide us in our life together and that's actually a wonderful witness we share for the world in that we things will be have differences between us but we can forgive and reconcile and be focused on our savior and the path to which he is calling us so you're like pastor what does this have to do with that gospel lesson well anna and simeon were old all right there were no two ways about it. Now, the difference between them in conversation with God and me is that from the beginning, they were following the Lord uh, and very devout and, and righteous uh, in their practice. Uh, but you know what? I wonder if they had started to doubt. They had been waiting and waiting and waiting. And yet God continued to call them to be faithful. We hear three times about the Holy Spirit and its power in the life of Simeon, a man whose name was Simeon, devout. The Holy Spirit was upon him. The Holy Spirit had revealed he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. And then, after all that waiting, the Spirit led him into the temple. And he recognized the Christ in the vulnerable baby Jesus and his very average and poor parents. And while it was a joy to witness the Christ and his proclamation in front of Mary and Joseph, it also came with the knowledge of a suffering Messiah a mother's heart that would break. Because as God's truth was coming into the world, it would be a wake-up call for Israel and the Gentiles alike. This is why we have confession when we come here every Sunday. Because when we come into God's presence, we realize those ways in which we have sinned against God and neighbor, but even more so 
we receive with joy the grace and mercy that we have through Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection for each and every one of us. And we pray that the Holy Spirit renews us to follow even more faithfully as we leave this place. Now, for many of us as we have gotten older, and I'm thinking it was exactly the same for Anna and Simeon, we've got some more aches and pains. And oh yeah, there are things that we don't do anymore. Too old to. Um, I used to love to do cartwheels. I'm not about to try that anytime soon. <laughs> um, but there are ways to which we are called to be faithful. And it may involve a change in where we are. It may involve people helping us where we didn't need help before, but now we do. And it's tough. It, it's, it's a grief. But sometimes there are amazing blessings and revelation that come underneath it. And I think a lot of it truthfully goes back to confession and forgiveness. Sometimes, and, and tr trust me, I do think with uh, age comes some wisdom. But sometimes we think we maybe know God's plan, but we don't. It is, we are on God's time. And God may lead us in a way there's sin and brokenness in this world that will come at us and change our trajectories. Because why? We're waiting for our Savior to come again when all things will be healed and made new. And what we take from Anna and Simeon today is A, they were faithful before the Savior appeared on the scene, and they were blessed to see him physically with their eyes. We have been blessed by him spiritually, renewed and claimed as God's beloved children. And our main task as we enter 2024 and always is actually, like Simeon and Anna, to be waiting waiting actively and faithfully for our Savior's return. That's the one goal. And we might get caught up on other things that we think are our goals, and, and I, I'm the first one to admit to wanting to plan and, and work ahead, and God's got something else uh, in mind by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we are called to put Christ first, 2024 and always because of everything he has already done for us. And we trust, as I said in the children's sermon, in Emmanuel, that no matter what is going on around us, that Christ is truly present. His peace, his love, his grace and mercy for whom the whole world is yearning still. And so in keeping focused on our Savior, faithfully looking for his return, we are called to share that love and mercy that many more may come in to the blessed family of God where we do help carry one another's burdens and celebrate those blessings and unexpected surprising joys. And so I pray that we will take the sure and certain hope of life and eternal life in our Savior Jesus Christ into the new calendar year. And yes, we've already been in a new church year for a little while, so you can renew your faith resolutions that you made on Advent 1, um, but that we take that hope and love to share with others into 2024 and always. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.